So today's talk is going to be about the uh, mystery blue spheres that fell from the sky over Bournemouth. Uh, this further enhances the all bar wave theory and uh, this video has been put together to explain how these spheres formed, what they're formed of and um, at the end we'll uh, just show an image of how the true nature of planets form and uh, it's through this process that the ancients knew. So there's a, th a phenomenon um, which is uh, known as chemtrail orbs and uh, what we will do is uh, try and explain that uh, why orbs are seen in chemtrails. Um, this is based on uh, nearly 20 years of uh, study of what I would class as the creative force. Um, this is a little uh, picture that I've put up. Uh, it'll give an indication of how the orb bar wave functions, uh, how it transmutes, but to talk in detail about that, that would have to be one, you know, uh, one hour talk uh, showing all the data that we hold uh, that proves that theory. So there's uh, an established understanding of the orb from the data and the research that we've done. I've added a little uh, uh, Bronze Age rock art image um, just to show that uh, the ancients, uh, our ancient ancestors, uh, saw this stuff. Um, they saw it in uh, periods of high uh, magnetic or electric in it, uh, electric um, activity um, and they also saw it uh, in this um, eras of volcanic ash in the sky and dust in the sky which then sticks to the orb. So I want to uh, explain how these uh, mysterious, uh, mysterious spheres fell from the sky, what they were made of, but I have to wind the back, the, the clock back, to um, 1561. Uh, in 1561, this was uh, a woodcut uh, from a gentleman called Hans Glazier. The villagers witnessed this. Uh, many of much of our research backs this up orbs moving in threes falling out of tubes uh, But what we got here is the mechanism we were looking at uh, we were trying to understand how this massless particle Which is somewhat as I said many many times before conscious or somewhat conscious uh, gained mass to form the 3% uh, matter that we see um as stars and gases and the dense matter that uh, that um, w w humans relate to so we have the 96 or 97 percent which has no mass uh, gains mass of charge uh, particle then form on its surface and uh, these orbs then crash to the floor or fall to the floor as the records um, suggest. So what you have is the orbs falling out of the tube with the particle that's attached to the orb making it heavy and making it fall to the floor. So we developed the um, orb uh, fugalite theory which is um, uh, based on um, dust, it could be volcanic ash or it could be uh, uh, sand um, blown up from a desert storm, dust storms. Uh, as this sand starts to stick to an orb, um, adhere to its charge, uh, if lightning strikes it then a fall from the sky and you have the stone spheres or the sky spheres, sky spheres that fall from the sky. Uh, there's so many accounts of them I'm not even going to bother quoting them uh, even showing them and so 
what I've got is uh, just to show how this thing works. If you imagine the red balloon is uh, orb, and um, it's transparent, you can see through it, so you could couldn't possibly see the orb as as such. As soon as you start to um, what I've put here is a part of a flower. Um, obviously, this represents the chemtrails uh, that are present in the upper atmosphere. And so this is a little model now where I'm rubbing charge to the balloon. And what you'll hear, you may hear it, is the fizzling sound that many UFO abductees uh, have when the uh, particle of charge sticks to the surface of the balloon. So, what we have is uh, orb in the upper atmosphere which is charged and the chemtrails, uh, the, the chemical chemicals in those trails then adhere to the surface of the orb. If lightning strikes it, it becomes fused and it becomes very hard, so we have stones falling from the sky. But uh, that only last time that happened on on a major outbreak was in 1921, and that lasted for four months. So what we have is numerous cases of um, chemtrail orbs. So they become visible when they pick up the, you know, as I was showing with the. Uh, with the flower in the kitchen uh, but what is present in these chemtrails is obviously not flower it's not the manna from heaven that the bible talks about so in the US patent um, the patent number is 6315213 called Danny uh, of November uh, the 13th 2001 and I will quote it uh, med uh, method for modifying weather so this is your uh, cloud seeding or chemtrailing or whatever you want to call it a method for uh, so this is the patent that the American uh, United States uh, government has uh, a weather altering patent um, it's US patent 4686605 and this is what the patent says a method for artificially modifying the weather by seeding rain clouds um, with a aqueous polymer the polymer dispersed into the cloud and the wind of the storm ag agitates the mixture causing the polymer to absorb the rain this reaction forms a gelatinous substance which precipitates to the surface below thus dis diminishing the clouds ability to rain so uh, it is uh, a substance which uh, takes water out the atmosphere so what these are known from um, in chemical terms is a super absorbent polymer and um, we see these used in everyday products such as nappies where they uh, absorb the water from the baby and um, the American government is spraying this material into the upper atmosphere so I want to refer you back to the demonstration that I put together of how the charge is charged to the surface of the orb of how the um, now if you imagine this is a gelatin substance in the upper atmosphere it sticks to the orb as moisture is present that moisture then is uh, fused as a jelly substance to the orb so you can say well you know where's the evidence for this happening well blue spheres fell all over England in 2012 um, they have the shape and form of the orbs and nobody knows how they truly were formed except that this is 
what I've been predicting from the orb fugue light theory and many of the other orb bar wave theories. And so I'd like to leave uh, everyone with a final picture, which is how planets truly form. Uh, they are fused to the surface of what I would class the orb sphere and these distinct patterns are seen within all the planets um, that haven't suffered major erosion. Thank you. Bye-bye.